I'm at the sock. This is a sock puppet account. Let's get to it. George Zimmerman once again shared the headline with bullets. According to Zimmerman, he was minding his own business driving his car when Matthew Apperson allegedly drove up beside him and fired a shot through his window, injuring Zimmerman with flying shards of karma. Apperson and Zimmerman had a previous road rage encounter, but at the time, Apperson had declined to press charges. At the scene of this crime, according to reports, Apperson told Zimmerman, the only reason I didn't press charges on you is because I wanted to kill you myself. So while Apperson has been charged with three crimes by police, he's also been hired to write the dialogue for the next three Liam Neeson movies. Kylie Jenner's family is apparently concerned that the reality starlet is spending too much time with the wrong crowd. Apparently, they finally watched an episode of their show. Here's a weird one. Some people are saying that NASA's Mars probe has revealed a deep bunker existing on the surface of the red planet. And they say it's not a trick of the light or a natural formation. It's an actual facility in outer space. They were later disappointed to learn that it's just Bernie Sanders' campaign headquarters. Despite their bad reputation, rats apparently care about each other. Japanese researchers found that when they put one rat in a dry cage and dropped another in an attached chamber full of water, the dry rat quickly helped rescue his wet friend. The rescue was even faster when performed by dry rats who had experienced the wet chamber themselves and could relate to the other's panic. Rats even chose saving their friends over getting a favorite chocolate treat. Scientists believe that this experiment shows that rats are capable of empathy. Certainly more empathy than the dickhead scientists who put them in danger for a test with no real value. Now let's look at some viral videos. In a video that would make Dr. Frankenstein jealous, a Chinese man was hit not once, but twice by lightning. A closed circuit camera captured this video of a man running in a light rain, who's then hit by lightning. Shazam! After a few seconds, the man gets up, shrugs it off, and resumes jogging, only to get hit a second time. This just goes to show that Thor's a real asshole when he's drunk. And here's a scene from a Japanese game show, where two contestants each place one end of a tube in their mouth and attempt to blow whatever's in the tube into their opponent's mouth. In this case, it was a giant cicada insect. Let's watch it play out. Ah, now there's a new meaning for fast food. You see, this is what happens when a country doesn't have hockey. And it goes from something unpleasant in one orifice to something unpleasant in another. Once again from a Japanese show that challenged runners to compete in hurdles after having insanely hot pepper sprayed in their ass. As you can see, they have specially designed outfits for the occasion. Okay, let's watch the action. Oh, that looks painful. I don't know what they call this show in Japan, but in German they call it Schadenfreude. For part two, they should stick a lump of coal between their cheeks and see who makes a diamond. I don't know what you win on this show, but it better be more than a case of turtle wax. <laughs> and now it's time to reveal the biggest shithead on the internet. A father decided to show his know-it-all teenage daughter that she didn't know it all with this magic trick. Places the coin under the bottle. She looks at the coin. Now he applies the plastic bag, does the conjuring, and... Put down and see if you can see it now, the nickel. Abracadabra! Your dad's a massive asshole! So he proved his point. His daughter didn't know everything. Like she can't trust her father to not humiliate her. Was that water or actual soda in there? Maybe dad thought spraying concentrated citric acid in someone's eyes was okay, because mellow yellow is mellow. Or maybe he watched too much Netflix Daredevil and wanted to reenact the accident that gave Matt Murdock his powers. Or maybe he's just a giant asshole. Let's go with the latter. So for abusing his daughter's trust, potentially spraying caustic chemicals in her eyes, and then being so proud of himself that he posted it to the internet, this father of the year is officially the biggest shithead on the internet. Congratulations. Now someone called Children's Aid. Now let's take a little preview of films coming to theaters near you. Okay, let's play a little game. Jean-Claude Van Damme's new movie, Pound of Flesh, features Van Damme, A, seeking revenge against the people who killed his family, B, seeking revenge on a butcher that overcharged him at the deli counter, C, seeking revenge against mobsters who double-crossed him, or D, tracking down his stolen kidney. 
Yep, it's me. As Van Damme awakens in a tub of goo, the victim of an organ snatching ring, which makes him pissed off and sends him on a mission to get his kidney back before it's too late to reattach it. Those thinking that this kidney is a metaphor for Van Damme's unfortunate career are doing too much thinking for a Van Damme movie. But the film's producer assures us that this is certainly the best Jean-Claude Van Damme action movie in many years. Yes, it's the first in the field of one. We're at a moment in history here, people. Finally, a movie too bad to even watch on Netflix. Mark Feuerstein stars in Larry Gay, Renegade Flight Attendant. Larry Gay, Renegade Male Flight Attendant. Okay, let's get it out of the way. Which one of you is gay? Larry Gay. That'd be me. There you go, a one joke movie, and that was it. The film is about a human flight attendant pitted against a robot flight attendant to save the jobs of his colleagues. We need you, Mr. Gay. Our livelihood depends on it. Nothing will stop me. Thank you, Mr. Gay. As long as it's not on a Tuesday morning, I have a Zumba class. Or Saturdays at 3, I have a standing body wax. Wednesdays aren't great. Hump day. And I take that quite literally. You know what I'm talking Mr. about. Mr. Gay. If this had been shot by a guy just using his iPhone, it could be given a pass. But the fact that a studio executive and an entire film production team conspired to charge people money for this crap qualifies as a crime under federal RICO statutes. Sir, can I get you a drink? Bourbon rocks? It sure does, but I'm afraid I can't serve alcohol to minors. Now here's an interesting one. The upcoming movie, The Tribe, is all in sign language. I wonder if they'll have dialogue voiceovers for the hearing unimpaired. Our foreign exchange student is Megan Walsh. I'm from Regina, Saskatchewan. Hey, did you say Regina? <laughs> the title Barely Lethal is a play on the fact that the main character is a teenage girl and a trained assassin. I know, the concept could be cool, but the execution is what matters, and whoever made this piece of crap should be executed. Career-wise, anyway. This story of a girl raised to be a killer who fakes her death so she can live like a normal teenage high school girl also stars Samuel L. Jackson, proving that he doesn't read scripts, only the number of zeros on his paycheck. Personally, I would rather face international terrorists than a clique of catty teenage high school girls. Terrorists are less vicious. The weird thing about Almost Lethal is that a bootleg of the film is available online featuring subtitles in what looks like some Middle Eastern language. These are the movies the Arab world gets? No wonder they hate us. That sock puppet account, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you here next Tuesday. I'm Ed the Sock, and I'm nobody's puppet. Don't you be either. Aloha.